Good evening. I am so glad you're able to join us tonight. My name is Mike. I'm the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills, and this is our Good Friday evening service. This is a chance for us to gather and to pray, a chance for us to reflect on what God has done for us and what happened 2,000 years ago. This service does not stand by itself. It knits together with the service that we had last night of Monday, Thursday, and the service that we will have Sunday morning for Easter. This is a simple time of reflection, of readings, of prayer, and somber music. We ask that you would just as much as possible slow down in whatever space you're watching this to turn down the lights, perhaps light some candles, and just meditate before what Jesus has done. And so together, we begin in prayer. Almighty God, look with mercy upon your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have three readings tonight, and after each reading, we'll pause for a minute 
just to give you time to reflect and to be silent. Our first reading is from Isaiah. This Isaiah reading was written centuries before Christ, and yet it showed us who Jesus would be. This is from Isaiah chapter 53, excuse me, chapter 52 and 53. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured and beyond that of any human being, for his form was marred beyond human likeness. And so we will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told they will see, for what they have not heard, they will understand. And he who, is, who has believed our message, to whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. And nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, with familiar with pain, like no one from whom people hide their face. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer, though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin. He will see his offspring and prolong his days. The will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils of the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. This ends our first reading. Our second reading is from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the cries of my anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises in the in you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted you and you delivered them. To you they have cried out and were saved. In you they have trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. 
They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you have brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open from mouth to wide against me. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. The people stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the wounds of lions. Save me from the horns of wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will raise you. You, f- you who fear the Lord, praise him, all you descendants of Jacob. Honor him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but he has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before you who fear me, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who will seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before him. For the dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship him. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. This ends our reading of the Psalms. Let's take a moment to reflect. Our gospel reading for the evening is from Mark chapter 14. Very early in the morning, the chief priests, the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. They bound Jesus, they led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things, for Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom of the festival to release a prisoner whom the people had requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. And the crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what they usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing that it was out of self-interest the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with this one that you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. 
Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus into the palace, that is the praetorium, and they called together the whole company of soldiers. They put on a purple robe on him, and they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him in the head and with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put, their, put his own clothes on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought, him to, they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they had crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see who would each get what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. It was written, the written notice against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on the right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it up in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemon samanach, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Some ran, filling a sponge with wine vinegar to put on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes down to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some of the women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and of Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and carried, cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him in Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. And so as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought, bought some linen cloth, took the body down, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in the tomb out of the rock. And then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Joseph, were where he was laid. This ends our reading for the evening. Let us take a moment to pause and reflect.
This service does not end. It continues on Easter morning, where we once again worship our Savior, our risen Savior, the Savior who bought us eternal life with his own death. This portion of the service concludes with two last things, a blessing and then the removal of everything from the altar. It is a symbol and a reminder that everything has been taken away and there is nothing left. Take some time this evening to pause, to reflect, and then join us again on Easter morning as we glory in what Jesus has done for us. Hear these words. We glory in your cross, O Lord. We praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into this world. May God be merciful and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all the nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord. We praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing. May all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord. We praise your holy resurrection. And by your cross, joy has come into this world. So may the peace which is passes all understanding fill you this evening and hold you close. Amen. <laughs>